Hey drummers, it's Rob Litton here from drumsaword.com and welcome to this free mini song lesson where I'm going to teach you the main parts, the most distinctive important parts from the song Champagne Supernova by Oasis, drums by Alan White. This song was suggested over on my Facebook page and so if you want to make your own song suggestions then please go over there to do so, you'll find the link beneath this video. And I've got for you nine parts here, nine drum beats and fills from the song. Uh, you can download this free PDF from my website, you'll find the link beneath this video. So you can have this printed out in front of you as we go through this lesson together. Okay, so part one, tempo 75 BPM. It's a long song this, but really there's only sort of one or two drum beats that Alan plays with some little nuances, some little ghost notes and doubles being thrown in. But the drum beat is relatively simple throughout the song. Um, like I say, it's just those adding in those little nuances that make it different. So the first part we've got, um, I've got the first four bars for you. And in those four bars, we've really got most of the, the combinations of drum beats that Alan plays. It starts with a drum fill though. It comes in with one and two and three and four E and. It could be two different toms and, um, and four E and, but I think it's the same tom. He uses the high tom quite a bit. So and, and then right, left, right, or left, right, left, whatever you want to do, it doesn't really matter what sticking you use. Three and four, e and one. And then we're into our first bar of groove. So without the ghost notes, we've got this drum beat. That's really it. But of course, it's all those little ghost notes he adds in, the notes written on the, the, the notation in brackets that are played quietly, little stick um, taps and drags. So the first bar, uh, we've got uh, ghost notes falling in between the hi-hats on the uh of two and the e of three. We can do a little crash symbol at the beginning. One and two and a three e and. So it's important you get those little taps down low. That's going to help you to play them quietly. They need to be quiet. If you don't play them quietly, then it's not going to sound like the drum beat. Then we get this distinctive little four e idea. A tap, a flam tap. So we get an accent followed by um, a ghost note, I just said a flam tap, it's not a flam tap, it doesn't matter what it's, what it's called, it's just, you're playing an accent, four E and, four E and, and it's followed immediately by a ghost note, four E and, and then at the end of the bar, Alan does this quite a bit throughout the song, but not every bar, um, he has a little drag at the end, little double left hand, a one, a one. Again, play as a ghost note, but you'll play it quietly anyway just because it's hard to play doubles loudly. So that bar, again, one and two and a three E and four E and a one. One and two and a three E and four E and a one. So with the intro, one, two, three and four E and one, two, a three E and four E and a one. So the next bar is very similar, except the ghost notes continue into the E of one. One E and two, but we don't get two E, usually it's just two on its own. One E and two, and then the same idea as the previous bar, and a three E and, and then again at the end we get the four E and, with the accent followed by the, the ghost note, four E and, and then instead of a drag at the end it's just a single ghost note, four E and a. Uh. So he mixes it up, adding in a, go, uh, a drag, sometimes just a ghost note, sometimes leaving it out completely. So that bar, one E and two, a three E and four E and a one. Next line, and this really surprised me. I was shocked by this. What I managed to find was a isolated drum track of this song, which really helped. I wouldn't have spotted this otherwise. I wouldn't have believed he was actually playing it. But Alan is playing a lot of bass drum notes in this. And you can see that for beat three, he plays three E and on the bass drum. I didn't know he was doing that. And he does this throughout the song quite a few times. So the ghost note at the beginning, one E and two, and then we get and a three E and, but underneath it, and a three E and, and a three E and. A ghost note falls with a bass drum on the E of three, a three E and. We get three bass drums in a row, three E and. Uh, that's, what, that's actually what he's playing on the recording. So then we get four and uh, at the end. So that bar, one E and two, and a three E and four, and a. One E and two, and a three E and four, and a. Then the last bar, we get one and. So now we get two bass drums on one and. One and two, and a three E 
and four E and a. Uh. So we've got the four E and a uh variation at the end there. So slowly before I play up to speed, let's play those, those bars together. One and two and three and four E and one, two, a three E and four E and a oh, one E and two, a three E and four E and a oh, one E and two, a three E and four and a oh, one and two, a three E and four E and a oh, one. Okay, now let's play those bars up to speed. You've got the microphone on so you can hear just the drums. Here we go. By the way, I should have mentioned for the previous example that the drums come in at 122, so I'm sure that's pretty obvious to you, but those are the first five bars of the song which occur at 122. This next one occurs at 201, roughly. It's a drum fill bar. Um, the hi-hat is open at this point. So the first half of the bar is really just the groove leading into it. We get one E and two and duh. There's little O's above the hi-hat mean open hi-hats. One E and two and duh. But then the drum fill part, we get this. And he does this quite a lot where he throws in the double, left hand double, to help him get around the drums. Three E and, uh, well not get around the drums, he just throws in doubles. Instead of playing them as singles, although you could, it just means that you're playing a double with the left hand and you stay on the right hand lead. It just means that your right hand is playing the down beats if you just throw in the double rather than play the double as two single notes. Anyway, this is how he plays it. <coughs> Excuse me. Three E and, uh, four E and. 3E and 4E and 3E and 4E and So the whole bar 1E and 2 and 3E and 4E and And now let's hear that up to speed So for 205, um, we go to the, uh, I think it's our first chorus where he's up on the ride cymbal for the first time. I just want to include it. It's really the same as the verse grooves, but we're playing on the ride cymbal. But there are some su su surprising sections where Alan sort of adds in some extra ride cymbal notes that you might have missed and the extra bass drum notes on the E's that you might have missed as well. So this first bar, we get this that occurs the first time he goes into the chorus. Uh, one and two and a three and. So that a three and occurs again. A three E and four E and duh. Done that already, but just on the hi hat. Then the next bar, one E and two, a three E and again. But then from the end of three, he continues with the ride symbol. And a four E and and a four E and duh. And a four E and a one. Little drag at the end. So he gets one and two and a three E and four E and a one E and two. A three E and a four E and a one. So feel free to improvise when you're going through the choruses with the ride cymbal. Don't overdo it though. Don't play it too much, but this is what Alan's kind of doing. He's sort of playing around with the ride cymbal and playing some sixteenth notes. Anyway, here's what that two bar uh, chorus section sounds like up to speed. So then at 2.30 we get a distinctive part of the song um, which is, has its own little drum beat to it. Um, and so what I've got for you is the first two bars he plays really, um, which is uh, what he continues later in the song as well. We get um, one and two, a three, that's the important bit, two and a three and, one and two, a three and four. That's the distinctive, distinctive part. One and two, a three and four. But then he plays four E and, four E and, but then continues that idea. Four E and a, four E and a one and, four E and a one and the next bar. One and two E and, and then we get again, two E and a, that bass falling in. Two E and a three and four E and, or it could be four E and, it doesn't matter what tom you choose. So those two bars, one and two, 
one and two, a three and four e and a one and two e and a three and four e and. And now let's hear it up to speed. So then on to page two and we've got our, our first triplet drum fill. Alan likes to play a lot of triplet drum fills. You hear a lot of triplets being played in the Oasis songs when Alan's on drums. Um, this one occurs at 3.45, it's our first triplet uh, fill. The first half of the bar is just the drum beat, but look out for the one E and part on the bass drum. One E and two and a, one E and two and a. Then we go to the high tom. Again, you could be your medium tom, it doesn't matter what tom you use. And with the bass drum, we go into 16th note triplets. So um, basically what we got here is six notes that fit into each beat of the bar. Beat three has six notes, beat four has um, six notes. And so you get this, this, this triplet feel. Except what Alan does is he moves, he plays the high tom again, four notes later after the first. One, two, three, four, one, so we get one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, I can't count the numbers, that's not correctly counted there. Three to to and to to four to to and to to one would be how I would count it. Three to to and to to four to to and to to. Bit confusing, but really at the end of the day, I'm just sort of feeling it. I did that wrong. I played three to ta ta four to ta 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 rather than three to ta 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 four ta coming in on that and ta there or just after the and of three, which makes it a bit quirky. But my trick is I'm feeling triplets. I just know to move up to the the, the tom um, four notes later. And that's pretty much up to speed, but just for complete sake, here we go without the microphone on. So then at 4.20, um, Alan moves to the crash cymbal uh, for a few bars. And uh, I've, I included this section because it's got a cool little bass drum part in bar two. So the first bar, one, and two, and a three, e and four, and a. It's like the same stuff we talked about before, but just we're on the crash symbol now. Then the next bar, one, e and, and this is the bit here, two, e, the surprise spatial on the e of two there. One, e and, two, e, two, e and, a three, e and, four, and a. Little drag at the end. Those two bars, one, and two, a three, e and, four, a one E and two E, a three E and four and a one. And up to speed. Okay, this next triplet drum fill occurs at four minutes 42. First part, there's the groove on the right cymbal, one and two and a three. And then just as we had for the uh, drum fill that occurred at 3.45, we're playing in 16th note triplets, six notes to a bar. This one's a bit more even. He, he still does the four thing, but this time he continues it. So we get one, two, three, four, four, one, and then four notes here, one, two, three, four, and then four notes here, one, two, three, four. And that adds up to the correct number of triplet notes. I'm just sort of helping you to sort of group it into something a bit more familiar. You're not counting it in fours, don't get confused by that. And it's just the grouping and added up, it gets you through the triplet bar. So we get one and, uh, one and two and a, uh, let me count it properly for you. One and two and a uh, three to and to four to and to one. One and two and a uh, three to to and to Go for the drums nicely. And let's hear that up to speed. So 
So this next drum fill occurs at 4.48 and it's a real weird one. What was Alan thinking? It's such a strange drum fill this, it's cool. Um, it's just, it, it comes out of nowhere, a bit surprising. And on the original recording, I couldn't really hear it, but with this isolated drum track, I was able to, to spot it. So we get one and two, then both hands to the uh, uh, snare drum and high tom, and, and then he plays 30 second notes in, on the uh of beat two there. Instead of playing as a double as we had been previously, he now definitely plays these as a single stroke, because we've got two different drums being played. Ah, so we get uh, uh, three, and uh, three, and it continues, and uh, three, E, and uh, four, E, and. A trip, 30 second note triplet at the end, four, E, and. So we get uh, one and two and uh, three E and uh, four E and one and two and uh, three E and uh, four E. That was better. I got the phase second note correct that time. One and two and uh, three E and uh, four E and one and two and uh, three E and uh, three. I'm keeping some mistakes in for you. One and two and a three E and a four E and so you can understand how the process of learning stuff like this. You don't feel too bad if you're finding it difficult as well. One and two and a three E and a four E and that's how you practice stuff. You practice it slowly, you build it up, and slowly increase the speeds. So that's pretty much it. But let's hear it up to speed now without the mic on. And then finally, right at the end of the song, 6 minutes 50, we go to this military snare drum part, which is really cool. The first bar is the most complicated bar he plays, and then for the rest of the song, as it fades out, he sort of plays simplified versions of this, taking notes out. But really, this bar here contains all of the tricky parts. You need to be able to play each of the bars he plays afterwards. But they're all very similar to each other. This is the basic rhythm. Well, this is the rhythm. So, in order for it to loop around, you need to start with your left hand. Although when you first play it, you could play right, left, instead of left, right, as I've written. But when you loop it, you'll see that you'll end up on the left hand. So let's play the left hand first. One, and, then we get both hands together. Two, E, remember that sort of two, E thing. It's the same here, but just on the snare. Two, E, and that E is, is ghosted. Two, E, so play it quietly. Two, E, and, then he doubles up the uh, 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 three, and then the E is stands out, left hand as, as an accent, three, E and uh. Then we get a flam, and I play it as a left hand flam, four, E, so a flam tap, four, E, that E is ghosted, four, E and, and then we get, it's a single stroke, 30 second note triplet at the end, uh, one, uh, one. And you can see if you start with your right hand, which you probably will want to, you end up on the left hand when you loop it round. Uh, one and so let's, let's bear it around a few times. One and two e and a three e and a four e and a one and two e and a three e and a four e and a one. A lot of fun to play that. Let's hear it played up to speed a couple of times. So there you go. If you've got any questions, email me, robertdrumstheword.com. Don't forget to download the free PDF that came with this lesson. Again, you'll find a link beneath this video. Same with my Facebook page. If you want to make your own song suggestions, as this song was suggested over there as well, then you can go over to my Facebook page, find the post where I ask for your song suggestions, and please post them beneath that. That's the best place other people get to vote on them, and then um, I get to choose them in future lessons if they're popular enough. Uh, so, um, you might also want to consider signing up to become an online member at my website, drumsaword.com. It's really what I do these lessons for, to promote. And what I currently offer for $97 is a full year's access to every single full video song lesson that I've ever recorded and transcribed. Unlike this lesson where I just taught you the main parts, with my full song lessons I teach you every single beat and fill, from start to finish, every single bar. You get the fully transcribed drum chart with each of those song lessons. And like I say, I've got over 350 famous and popular songs up on the website already, including a load of other Oasis songs. So lots of other stuff to look forward to on the website there. 
As a thank you for signing up, I give you access to hundreds more videos teaching you many, many famous drum beats, fills, and solos. I give you three ebooks I've written over the years containing hundreds more famous drum beats, fills, and solos. And then over the year of your subscription, you also gain instant online access to all the new material I upload to my members. And I record new lessons every week unless I'm ill or on holiday. So you've got lots of cool stuff to look forward to over the year of your subscription. But if you've got any questions, feel free to email me, robertdrumstheword.com. And until our next drum lesson together, Toodle pip, peace out, and happy drumming to ya.